Hey guys, I hope you're doing awesome, staying full of the Holy Spirit, seeking the Lord daily, and just staying full and fed by the Word, and just staying full of the Lord's presence. Um, so I'm feeling led to come on here today and just chat with you guys. I don't even know all of what I'm going to say. <laughs> I just feel the Lord wanting me to do this. And so uh, I just pray that He speaks through me and that He just encourages and uplifts everyone who's listening. So um, I just wanted to say real quick, I feel like the Lord has given me, um, wanted me to do this channel to be a voice like John the Baptist saying, you know, make straight the way of the Lord, make his path straight, um, prepare the way for the Lord. And you know, the first time he came, he had one person that come ahead of him and have that ministry. Well, this time he has a lot of people doing that type of ministry right now, like urging people to um, to be close to the Lord, to repent, to make straight, make make straight the way of the Lord, make his path straight, make people ready for him to come. So. That's what I feel the Lord, the ministry that he wants me to do here, and just to share the words that he gives me. Um, so, with that said, I want to read real quick Isaiah 26, um, starting in verse 7, verse 7 to 9. Um, but he's had me a lot in Isaiah lately, and Psalms, and I think it's just a lot of that applies to this time that we're living in right now, and what's about to happen really soon. I mean, the whole Bible does, but some parts he just keeps bringing over and over and over to my attention and one of those is Isaiah 26 um, there's quite a few um, Isaiah 66 um, anyways lots and lots of Isaiah and Psalms pretty much the whole thing but um, I just want to read a couple things and encourage you guys but the main thing that I keep feeling the Lord telling me whenever I ask him what is the message you want me to share with people what is the message you want me to put out there and he just keeps reiterating it over and over. And it's stay on the straight and narrow path. Stay on the straight and narrow. And so I just want to encourage you guys with that today. <laughs> My daughter playing in the rain in the puddles. Um, stay on the straight and narrow path. It's really, really easy to get distracted and get off that path. And it's so easy to be like everything off the path that we're supposed to be on. You know, it looks enticing it looks colorful it looks exciting you know we're like ooh, I like that we keep being distracted ooh that looks cool you know I want to go over there but he has a path in our lives marked out for us and that is to follow Jesus and to look to him and to keep our eyes fixed on him and keep putting one foot in front of the other going on that straight and narrow path not constantly getting distracted and going on all these rabbit trails um just the other night I was reading um Pilgrim's Progress to my daughter and it's like a condensed version of it and it's illustrated um, I was reading that to her and I came across this section it just really spoke to me and Christian um, the guy in it he's walking on this path that the Lord has him going toward to get to the celestial kingdom and he meets Mr. Worldly Wiseman and Mr. Worldly Wiseman tells him oh go on this other path it's way faster it's way better yeah go that way and so he's like okay so he follows this Worldly Wiseman's advice and he ends up realizing this is not the right path and once he realizes I'm not supposed to be on this path he runs back to the right path he's supposed to be on and gets to it as quick as he can once he realizes it so that's how we should be like if, if we realize we've strayed from that straight and narrow path that the Lord has us on like as soon as you realize it run back to the path that you know you're supposed to be on and keep walking on that straight and narrow path like keep following Jesus keep looking to him keep your eyes focused on him and what he has has for you to do in your life because he has a calling and a you're job for each one of us wet. you're freezing and you're wet we are you're playing the puddle all right go inside <laughs> i'll come in just a minute um so he has a plan and a purpose for each one of us and he has things he wants us to do he has um specific things in our lives that he wants us to do and he has a calling for us and so we need to stay tuned into what that is and listening to him following him and doing those things um one thing i want to encourage you to do don't stay on the sidelines anymore you know if the lord has put something in your heart like a ministry um something for you to do anything it can be something small it can be something big but if he's put something on your heart only you know what that is that he's put on your heart to do i want to encourage you and i know i've said this before just do it don't wait don't put it off don't be like oh, i don't have everything that i need i'm i'm not skillful at this or that like Moses's excuse I'm not good at talking well good because the Lord will work through you even more <laughs> um, 
I'm not good at talking either. <laughs> I stumble my words so much. I'm a terrible speaker. But you know, the Lord calls us to things that we're not naturally good at so that he can shine, so that he can be the one to get glory, not us. So if the Lord's put something on your heart to do, please, please, please don't wait any longer. Just do it. There is not a lot of time left. We know that. We feel that our spirits, he is coming soon. Get on board. Um, we need all hands on deck at this point. We need every person who could possibly be working for the Lord and for his kingdom. We need them out there working. No more people sitting on the bench anymore. Like, if you're a bench sitter, <laughs> don't be a bench sitter anymore. Get in the game. You know, come on. Like, share the gospel as much as you can um, in a gentle, loving, respectful way. You know, when you're led. Um, whatever the Lord's put on your heart. You know, if you have a passion for something, if you just really love something, you know, it can be a hobby or something like that. Like, turn it into something for the Lord's kingdom. We need more people on board right now. Um, as many as possible. And you know, that will hasten the day of His coming having everybody who can doing the things that he wants us to do, praying night and day, um, praying for him to come, praying for people to be saved. Um, actually, tomorrow night I will be um, live on Aaron with God a Minute's channel and with some other amazing watchmen and women. And we're just going to be praying for the Lord to come, praying for people, lost people to be saved. Um, we don't want to unite in those prayers. Those are biblical prayers. A lot of people are like, oh no, we want Jesus to wait. We don't want him to come just yet. That's not a biblical prayer, guys. It's not. The Bible is, says, come Lord Jesus, come. Even so, come. Like, We're supposed to want him to come. We're supposed to pray this. We're supposed to try to hasten the day, as Second Peter says. Hasten the coming of the Lord. So we need all hands on deck. <laughs> it's, it's, it's at the time in history where we know it's close. And we want to hasten that day. We want to, as many people as possible, working for the kingdom, praying night and day, giving the Lord no rest until he comes, until he does what he promised that he would do. So I want to share just a little bit more with you guys. Um, I want to share Isaiah 26, um, 7 through 9. It says, the way of the righteous is smooth. And it makes me think of that straight and narrow path again, like that's the good path to be on. The way of the righteous is smooth. Oh, upright one, make the path of the righteous level. Indeed, while following the way of your judgment, O Lord, we have waited for you eagerly. we got to be waiting for the Lord eagerly, okay? Um, so your name, even your memory, is the desire of our souls. At night, my soul longs for you. Indeed, my spirit within me seeks you diligently. That should be us right now. Um, for when the earth experiences your judgments, the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness. So that's really been my prayer in my heart lately, like... I'm waiting eagerly for the Lord and he is the desire of my soul and I pray that he's the desire of your soul too um, and it says when the earth experiences your judgments the inhabitants of the, Lord, the world learn righteousness so judgment sounds like some terrible and scary thing and it is but it teaches people righteousness it teaches people humility it teaches people to seek the Lord when otherwise they wouldn't have hard things on the earth produce good fruit in people's souls um, and the Lord uses those things to bring about the eternal things that he wants. So we pray for him to come. We pray for him to gather his children. We pray for him to bring judgment because he has to, because he's going to. And that's just what has to happen. I'm going to read um, Isaiah 66. I'm going to start in verse um, 15 or start in the end of verse 14. But he will be indignant toward his enemies. For behold, the Lord will come in fire with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and to rebuke with flames of fire. For the Lord will execute judgment by fire and by the sword on all flesh and by his sword on all flesh. And those slain of the Lord will be many. Now, I know that's tough and that's not something we like want to put on a plaque on our walls, but this is what is coming. And we know it is. The Bible says it is in the whole thing. It talks about it. Um, we know judgment is coming on the world at some point, and we see all the signs of it coming soon. So we need to stay sober-minded. We need to stay ready. We need to stay prayed up. We need to stay full of the Holy Spirit every single day. Um, but verse 17, this is where the good news is for us. Those who sanctify and purify themselves go to the gardens, following the one in the center. I know who the one in the center is, and I think you guys do too. That's Jesus. Like, those who sanctify and purify themselves before that day of judgment, 
Like they will go to these beautiful gardens following the one in the middle. Like it's so beautiful. And before all that, it talks about all these amazing things. Um, good things that are promised to those who are ready and are purified. Um, but it's not going to be pretty for the people left on here. But they will learn. They will learn to seek the Lord through those things. So um, we just want to pray. We know I pray a lot. We want to pray for people to come to the Lord now while this we're still in this grace age. We want to pray for the people that who will be here after the age of grace is over <laughs> um, to come to the Lord then and to allow the tough things on the world not to harden their hearts but to soften their hearts and to bring them to their knees in repentance and say sorry god you know i believe in you now i believe in jesus i want to follow you now like that's that's the goal that's what we're praying for and hoping for through all the hard things in the world um i want to read real quick what john the baptist said let's see john answered them all as for me i baptize you with water but one is coming who is mightier than i and i am not fit to untie the thong of his sandals he will baptize you with the holy spirit and with fire his winnowing fork is in his hand to thoroughly clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire so this was john filled with the fiery passion of the holy spirit and talking about jesus and how he will come and guys he will not come as this meek lamb who is going to be killed this time he will come like a mighty roaring lion. He will come as a king to take back what is his. He will take us, snatch up his own people in his arms, and will bring judgment on the world that has rejected him. Like this is such a serious time that we're living in right before all these things happen. No, we don't know when it's going to happen, but we know that it will. And we want to be ready. We want to be on fire for the Lord. I just, I want to encourage you guys. Um, it's so easy to just to allow the distractions of the world to take our eyes off the Lord and it's we all do it sometimes we all forget about the Lord sometimes we all get distracted sometimes and just like I talked about those rabbit trails like once you realize it go back on that straight narrow path look at the Lord keep your eyes fixed on him every day make that a conscious choice like, I'm going to keep my eyes fixed on the Lord through everything that I'm doing during that day you know keeping our hearts centered on him staying in that place of looking to him being ready for him um, doing his work so that's what I want to encourage you guys with today um, I'm gonna pray real quick for all of you watching and yeah if you want to join us tomorrow night on uh, God a minute on that channel um, we're just gonna be praying together so I um, just want to pray real quick Lord God we love you so much and I thank you so much for your compassion and your love and how you have done everything it takes to bring us near to you and i just thank you jesus for your sacrifice for us lord it never gets old just thank you so much for what you went through for us and i pray that we would live lives worthy of the calling that you've put on us worthy of your sacrifice lord help us to not fall short of that help us to not disappoint you help us to walk out um, our lives and make you proud of us and happy with what we're doing on the world and i know lord that we will um, mess up sometimes but please through your Holy Spirit, enable us to, to conquer and be overcomers and to push through this last bit of this race that we have. Um, even though our feet are tired, we're, we're so tired, we're so weary, we're so ready to be with you, Lord. Help us to push through that and help us to gain new strength. In Isaiah 40, 31, you said, those who wait for the Lord will renew their strength. Lord, we are waiting for you. We pray that you just renew our strength as we wait for you. Help us to run and not grow weary. Help us to walk and not faint. Lord, we want to bring about the things that you want on the earth and to bring in every last soul we can in these last hours that we have here, Lord. So I pray that you empower us through the Holy Spirit to be your voice and your hands and your feet and your body on this earth, Lord, and bring us home soon, Lord. We just love you so much. We want to be with you. So gather your children in your arms, Lord. Gather us soon, as soon as you can, Lord. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen.